All right, so we're going to stick with axial loads for uh, a little bit here, but we're going to address a different kind of problem, a problem that uh, if we didn't have our deformation equation, we wouldn't be able to figure out what the internal resultant forces were. This is called static indeterminacy. Uh, and so if we look at a problem like this one over here, uh, we have an applied load and then we have two support forces. If we start to deal with this as if we were uh, doing a statics problem to find our internal resultant loads, what we'd find is the X equation doesn't matter. Um, the moment equation doesn't tell us anything. Uh, and we end up with this equation here in the Y direction which has two unknowns, a support force at A and a support force at B, uh, but only one equation. And so we're stuck. We don't know what to do. Uh, statics, uh, as this guy puts <laughs> down here, uh, it's, it's failed us here. So what do we do? Um, what we do are we need another equation and we have another equation. We have our deformation equations and that can allow us to solve this problem. So let's figure out how we can work that, uh, create another equation with our deformation equation. We need a combative compatibility condition. That is a statement that defines a known displacement in the problem, right? Where do we have a known displacement? We don't know the displacement here, but we do here, right? That's not going to move. We're assuming that this support is immovable and that's not going to change. Okay. And so I can write the delta AB, the distance between A and B, is not going to change. It's going to be zero. Uh, we know C is in the middle, so AC, the length of AC plus the length of CB, uh, is going to add up to this, right? And so we can say that the change in the length of AC minus the change in the length in CB is equal to zero, right? Because how I, let's say this, assuming this gets longer, so it's going to have a positive change, uh, this one is going to have a negative change, okay? And that's why we have that negative sign there. Um, and those are going to have to sum up to zero. So that's our extra equation uh, that's going to allow us to solve this problem. So when you run into a statically indeterminate problem, you want to find a compatibility condition that is a con uh, an equation that describes some kind of displacement condition about uh, the problem. All right, now we're going to use that uh, deformation equation that we just came up with in order to solve uh, for our problem. Now we've got two unknowns and two equations. So here's our equation. We sub in our deformation equation here. Uh, we're going to be able to multiply both sides by AE to get rid of our denominator. And we get to here. This is known, right? That's just the length AC. That's known. And so we don't know FA and FB. Um, and I can then put, you know, FB in terms of, uh, or FA rather, in terms of FB. This is my second equation. Now I can take this and go back and throw that into uh, my y direction statics equation uh, and we can solve this, uh, this problem. So what does this equation say? It says the higher C is on the beam. In other words, if C A is really small or a L A C is small, uh, then FA is going to be bigger, right? If I moved C way up here, then we'd expect that that support force at A would be taking the brunt of that force, right? And that's what this equation says. If LAC is really short, this value gets big, and FA, the support force at A, is going to be much bigger than the for support force at B. That makes sense. <laughs> Right? Right? That makes sense. I hope that makes sense. All right. So now we've got this equation in the y direction force balance. Uh, and then you've got a little bit of math to do. So see if you can solve for force B. 
you'll have to go back in your notes to look at that y direction uh, force balance. And pause. You got a couple problems here. And now solve for force A. You know what force B is. Uh, that should be pretty straightforward. And pause. And now question three. Find the displacement of point C right here. And so to do that, you'll need to use your, uh, your deformation, axial deformation equation, right? Because now we know uh, the support forces, uh, and so we can find the internal resultant loads uh, within, these, um, within these different sections. So you can solve this either using section AC or using section CB. And that's it for this mini lecture.